Identical twins are as close as nature can get to human cloning. Tiny replicas with identical genes, wonders of human reproduction. Some are amazing mirror images, their movements perfectly in sync. Others can be separated for years only to discover they share strikingly similar jobs, tastes, and hobbies. But not all identical twins are as identical as we once thought. Advances in genetic science are revealing key differences in personality, development, disease, even sexuality. Through state-of-the-art 4D ultrasound scans, scientifically accurate visual effects, and microscopy footage, we delve into the complex yet delicate world of twins in the womb. This rapidly multiplying collection of cells is called a blastocyst. And it's here that nature's most remarkable reproductive anomaly can sometimes occur. It's an event so mysterious it wasn't witnessed until recently. Several days after conception, the blastocyst spontaneously splits in two. Each new blastocyst is composed of cells with identical sets of chromosomes, and they carry the same arrangement of genes along their length. The two blastocysts now have the potential to develop into identical twins. Fifteen weeks into their journey from conception to birth, the identical twins move for the first time. They interact and explore their environment with their hands and feet, touching and even appearing to kiss. Eventually, their mother will feel the same kicks each twin feels in utero. Sometimes they appear aggressive, other times almost caring. They look identical, but unseen influences may already be taking effect, ones that could subtly alter the expression of genes in their growing bodies. And new research claims these subtle changes to a gene's expression can be passed down through generations without affecting the underlying DNA. Researchers studying a register of births and deaths in a remote region of northern Sweden noticed a peculiar phenomenon. A generation of boys who experienced a famine had grandchildren who led longer lives. On the other hand, descendants of the boys who enjoyed plentiful food as children experienced an increased risk of diabetes, cardiovascular disease, and higher mortality rates. The effect of famine was especially strong if the boy was just about to start producing reproductive cells, his sperm. It seems the genetic makeup of these reproductive cells were directly, albeit subtly, altered by the famine or feast. Through their sperm, they passed on a nutritional legacy to future generations. The more we explore the hidden world of epigenetics, the more it seems we are not simply a product of our genes. It's 35 weeks. The twins are now fully developed. They have hair, eyelashes, nails, and can open and close their eyes and mouths. Conditions in the womb are cramped. Even though at four and a half pounds, 
each weighs a third less than the average baby. Our twins are ready to be born at week 35 by C-section. It's not always obvious to the obstetrician whether the twins are identical or fraternal. But our twins shared a placenta, the clearest indication that they're identical. After an extraordinary journey, our two reproductive marvels have made it safely into the world. They may look alike, but we know they're already different.